topic of webinar. Thank you very much for joining me. <coughs> um, we are going to take a look at uh, all the major pairs, uh, a couple of the crosses, and the uh, indices that are of significance. Um, remember, we have a holiday on Wednesday. It is the new year. Um, so uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, going to be very dead. Monday and Friday will likely be the only days with approaching normal liquidity and volatility. Um, but even then, it will be somewhat limited all of this week. Uh, and then next week, things will pick up and get back to normal. Uh, so if you have questions, put them in the chat box. Please take a minute to look over the risk disclaimer, which should now be on your screen. And then we will go to the charts. All right, let's go. All right, so let's start with everyone's favorite pair, Euro Dollar. Um, we gapped up slightly <coughs> to start the day um, or to start the week. Euro, obviously, on Friday, very interesting, massive candle. Uh, 138.90 was the high, basically, and the low is 137.90, so that's a 200 pip candle. Um, we squeezed out all these stops under 138, oh, just above 138.30, <coughs> and then we promptly fired them back down. Um, to the upside, first major resistance is going to be about 137.75, uh, and then going down, there is support here. Uh, 137.12, 136.90. Then the major support range is about 136.80 to 136.50. That 30 pips is going to be very significant. We have this 200 period EMA here on the four hour chart hanging out there. Should keep price relatively well contained, especially considering the holiday. Uh, so keep your eye on uh, down on that area of possible buying opportunities, uh, if only for a short term trade. Okay, um, dollar Swiss is one of the more clear pairs out there right now. Um, I am right now neutral dollar Swiss. I very much would like to buy it. Uh, in order for me to be able to buy it, I need a four hour close above 89.50. If I get that, I will be looking to enter long, remembering of course that 89.90 is this 200 period EMA and that has been fairly significant of late. So I'll be keeping a very close eye on price as we approach that level. But I'm going to play this trend line break at 89.50 should we see it sometime this week. Pound dollar. <clears throat> All right. Um, pound dollar already pushing a little bit higher here in early action on Sunday. Um, another gap higher, a little bit of a better bid. Um, a similar story to the euro, though less dramatic. All right. This is the resistance level. Uh, I mean, I don't really want to count I mean, if we look at a daily chart, <clears throat> all right, that resistance level is still very much intact on a daily close. This kind of candle makes me nervous. Not a huge fan of buying um, euro dollar, pound dollar, anything. I'm also not a huge fan of selling them here, but um, we'll have to see if we do manage to generate some downside. I would like to buy pound dollar first at about 163.40, and if I got stopped out there, I would try again at about 162.50. Um, the 200 period EMA in this uh, trend line area here around 162 should provide some pretty decent support. So that's what I'm looking for on pound dollar. Um, sort of being very cautious here on dollar pairs considering the ridiculousness that we saw. Um, <clears throat> dollar yen uh, gapped up to new highs today. Uh, 105.18 now is the new high. Uh, this pair, I mean, looks pretty set to continue marching. We're above this top side trend line resistance. Um, this open gap is a little misleading. Uh, some of the gaps that are floating around, especially on North American brokers, uh, have to do with the fact that uh, our brokers remain closed despite Asian markets being open. So this was active market participation here, um, not really as much of a holiday gap uh, as you would ex expect just looking at the chart. So sort of keep that in mind uh, in terms of your general gap psychology. Um, we are seeing, uh, obviously, the RSI continue to push up into overbought territory, um, but it spent a good amount of time there. I would not read too much into that. So dollar yen longs look good, but you need to find a good entry, and right now there really isn't one. So watch your shorter term charts and see if you can find a pullback or a consolidation to get long off of, and then hope that this run continues. CAD yen is attractive here as well. We saw the CAD weaken fairly substantially uh, towards the end of Friday. 
I'll show you dollar CAD in a second. You'll see it very clearly there. If we are fortunate enough to see CAD yen touch 97.97 or so, that would be a very nice low risk, uh, high reward opportunity for a long. Uh, so watch that 97, 97, 98 basically uh, area. From 98 down to 97.78 should be a very good support range. If we see that here early in the week, it would be worth considering along with a stop just below that region looking for new highs above basically 98.75. <clears throat> um, other yen pairs, Aussie yen remains very clear <clears throat> and very attractive if we can ever get this breakout. All right, so this descending trend line has been in place since the 22nd of October. We've seen two and now three fairly significant touches on it. Um, if we do see Aussie yen again dip down to about 92.90, which is really only 20 pips away from right here, uh, we may see a bounce there off of this moving average cluster, see it push above this descending trend line and push higher. So Aussie yen is one to keep an eye on. I promise I'd show you CAD. This is dollar CAD. Uh, you can see it rallied significantly on Friday. Uh, looks like it's in resistance now. So if we see a little bit of dollar CAD um, weakness, which would be CAD strength, that would really help that CAD yen trade possibility. So keep your eye on dollar CAD uh, as well for some cross influence. Um, <clears throat> I was going to show you. Let's do Aussie dollar. Okay, so this inverted head, and sh inverted head and shoulders pattern here on Aussie dollar still technically valid. Okay, um, we still need a break above. 89.40 or so. Uh, I'm a little bit unhappy that we dipped below this previous low at 88.73, so we need to get back above there. <clears throat> but if we can get above 89.40, we could see uh, at least you know a medium-sized squeeze higher towards about 90, 91. Um, obviously, this descending trend line highly significant, so watch that. A break of that would signal uh, at least the possibility of a small correction higher uh, on this very overall pair. Um, which is in, of course, a very significant zone, uh, uh, very significant support zone here on weekly and longer term charts. So watch um, Aussie yen. Another Aussie opportunity here is Aussie Swiss. Okay, <clears throat> that Euro rally took us down to retest this trend line pretty nicely. We saw the huge rejection candle going sideways, digesting some of this move, uh, and I would say that uh, there is a pretty decent opportunity here uh, for longs looking for a move above 80 up and towards the 81 or so range. Uh, stop below the lows, uh, about 78.30 or so, so about 60 pip stop, not nothing really that terrible. Um, Kiwi Yen. Kiwi Yen remains just ugly. All right, I don't really have anything to do with Kiwi Yen right now. Um, <clears throat> dips down towards about 85 are buying opportunities, I suppose. That's a very nice trend line moving average confluence. You could try to buy it there, but really this pair is looking a little bit just uh, choppy and sideways. A lot of that is because of the way that Kiwi Dollar looks. This is Kiwi Dollar. We are now below three key moving averages here on the four hour chart, looking for eventual breakdown below 81.41 uh, to sell off you know, a little bit down towards at least 80.70, if not lower. All right, so unless Kiwi manages to get back above 82.70 or so, uh, pressure is going to remain on Kiwi Dollar and Kiwi Yen. Uh, it, the Euro Yen and Pound Yen, there are not a lot of good opportunities here. You can see this nasty reversal. <coughs> Euro Yen could be a buying opportunity to around 143.40. So if we see about 120 pips sell off, you could try to pick up some Euro Yen. Pound Yen has completed its measured move off this flag break. It, the, buy, the buying area I'm interested in on Pound Yen is about 170.50. So that's about 300 pips lower. Uh, so Pound Yen I'm off for quite some time, I would suspect. Uh, not really interested in continuing to chase this move higher. It's starting to get a little stretched. Um, it's been stretched for a while, but it's been it's continuing to work its way uh, into a sort of concerning location. Um, let's see. Uh, real quick, e minis. Major support on e minis is 1818. All right. So if we do see about a 20 point sell off, which is nothing extraordinary, uh, that could be a good opportunity for some medium term longs. The Nikkei continues to look constructive, which is why I am only really looking for long opportunities on yen pairs, all right? So I'm just picking my spots um, on yen pairs and finding the ones that look like they have still some room to run to the upside. You can see CAD yen here. I right, retested the 16,000 figure pretty nicely, and or sorry, Nikkei tested the 16,000 figure here pretty nicely and continues to push a little bit higher. Uh, so as long as the Nikkei looks like it broke out off of these, above these highs, all right, um, making new highs, I remain uh, pretty bullish and uh, constructive the yen pairs. 
Um, one thing that was interesting, uh, I, I haven't actually been able to do my research to figure out why, the South African Rand uh, was very, very, very weak uh, on Friday. You can see uh, this kind of move that we had, all right, just broke up above these stops here and sort of just started picking stuff up. Yen pairs, all right, were all very strong on Friday. But if we look at uh, the South African Rand versus the Yen, all right, we actually saw um, a significant breakdown. We're now testing some uh, resist or support here, um, but <clears throat> this is the least bullish looking Yen pair right now. Um, I don't know how many of you trade the South African Rand. I know it, some people like it. Uh, I don't think I've ever traded it, but it is looking fairly weak right now, so sort of keep your eye out for that. Some other odd pairs that I have traded. Uh, Swedish Krona, all right, bearish under 6544. Uh, a Tesla 6544 would actually be a really nice selling opportunity. Um, unfortunately, right now, the Norwegian Krone looks pretty decent against the dollar. Um, <clears throat> looking for a little bit of a squeeze above, uh, back within this wedge. The major trade is still a four-hour close above 6.2 for long uh, USD and OK. All right. Um, I ran through most of what I wanted to run through. So if you have questions, if I didn't cover something you wanted me to cover, please, now would be the time to ask. I will keep talking while I wait for you guys if you want to ask questions. Uh, gold right now, all right, major resistance on gold, 1220. Uh, that's actually very, very significant resistance on gold. So if we do see a break of 1220, we may actually get some short covering. We may see a little bit of a surge higher in gold. So keep that in mind. Um, crude breakout finished its measured move. I still expect crude to continue marching higher um, as long as we're above... 90, uh, 99, basically, buying opportunities abound in crude. <coughs> um, it just has not been very actively traded lately, so not that much to get that excited about. Um, let's do some of the crosses real quick. Euro Aussie, uh, inverse of Aussie Swiss, so we did see a beautiful test of this backside trend line, uh, followed by rejection, so I do think that we may see uh, some upside in Aussie crosses. All right, Euro Aussie lower, Aussie Swiss higher <coughs> um, as we go. Uh, through Euro Kiwi, all right, nice buying opportunity actually on Euro Kiwi at about 167.50, uh, so about 100, exactly 100 pips lower right now. So if we do see that dip, that's actually a very attractive opportunity. You may want to uh, consider a relatively low risk along there. Uh, it would take it cost you about I don't know 50 pips or so uh, to keep a pretty decent stop. Um, last but not least is Euro Pound. Uh, Euro Pound is. Uh, kind of flagging here a little bit, all right? You can see this resistance area just shy of 8.4. The major support, 8.325. Watch that range. I'm still looking for Euro Yen to make, uh, not make a new low, but at least reach these 82.50 lows that we saw back in uh, very early December. Pound Kiwi and Pound Swiss. <clears throat> Pound Kiwi is tricky here. Uh, I, I wanted to buy it on this breakout, but I missed it. I like kind of just missed it by a couple candles, and then this retest didn't get down far enough. And now we sort of just floating up here. Um, I like pound kiwi higher still, um, but <clears throat> it may take a little bit of a break here. If you see this, if you see this like isolated island area up here, if you see this lower trend line break. Uh, you could start looking for buying opportunities basically on this retest. All right, which will take you down to about two. All right, so if we do get a uh, about 180 pip move lower uh, towards the, the round, big round number at two. Uh, that would actually be a pretty nice buying opportunity for pound kiwi. Up until that point, I'm really not going to touch it. So pound Swiss inverse of euro pound. So it's the you can see here we have it flagging. <coughs> uh, I am looking. It's holding under the 6.8% fib, um, but I'm still looking for it to uh, eventually pop and move up towards 149.22, those previous highs, especially if, as I said before, we see Dollar Swiss manage to make it back above that trend line. All right, any other requests? Uh, 
All right, then I'm going to wrap things up. Um, it is a holiday week, so I'm not expecting a ton um, to be kind of just casually keeping an eye on the markets. Please be sure to watch the two videos on our YouTube page um, <coughs> that I posted. They'll cover some of the stuff that I may not have gotten to today. Um, and as always, you can find me on Twitter. If you have questions or requests, I'll be happy to send you a chart uh, there. That is my Twitter handle. You can also find me at the at Global FX Club Twitter. All right. All right. Thank you guys very much for joining me. I hope you have an absolutely terrific new year. I look forward to talking to you soon. Um, trade safe. Remember, holiday, don't do anything really that crazy.